Thank you. So, um, good morning. People have been pursuing smart computing systems for decades. These two cartoons illustrate the state of smart computing systems 20 years apart. The picture on the left-hand side is from 20 years ago. Dave asked his refrigerator for another beer. The smart appliance responded, I'm sorry, Dave, I can't do that. The bathroom scale and the hall mirror are reporting disturbing flap anomalies. The picture on the right-hand side is about the present time. Dave was relieving himself against a light pole in a smart city. The light pole decided to teach him a lesson and showered him in his own champagne. So what can we observe here? First, there has been tremendous growth in the scale of smart computing systems, from the smart appliances in the early days to the smart cities we have today. Second, there is a common fear that machines may dominate humans someday. However, most computer scientists will agree that the fear is ungrounded. The third point is more subtle. Over the last 20 years, smart computing systems have stayed at more or less the same level of smartness. The smartness essentially comes from the capabilities of sensing and detecting dynamic context and responding to that context autonomously. The vertical axis on the left-hand side shows the trajectory of smart computing systems. The initial focus uh, was on smart appliances and gadgets enabled by instrumenting and connecting everyday objects. Then came smart environments, such as um, smart office space and smart homes that were um, interactive and personalized. More recently, um, the advent of technologies such as the Internet of Things and mobile crowd sensing has resulted in smart systems at a societal scale, such as the various smart city applications. Again, the scale of those systems has uh, grown substantially, but not necessarily the smartness. One question then follows. When the entire city or even the planet has become smart, what's next for smart computing systems? The answer lies in evolving those systems in a completely different direction. Instead of making them larger in scale, we should make them even smarter. The key enabler here is what we call uh, cognitive computing. Let me mention two important aspects of cognitive computing. First, with big data analytics and the underlying cloud computing infrastructure, we are now able to integrate um, all sources and types of real-world data. That, in turn, allows us to generate deep insights for driving business innovation and industry transformation. Second, advances in um, uh, knowledge discovery and machine learning have made it possible to understand natural languages and to self-learn from a massive amount of data and knowledge. That allows computer systems to reach an unpre unprecedented level of intelligence by exploiting the growing body of human knowledge captured in books, papers, and so forth. So what is cognitive computing anyway? We say cognitive computing is an emerging computational paradigm with four defining characteristics. Understanding, reasoning, learning, and conversing. Cognitive systems understand by processing and interpreting both structured and unstructured information. They reason by drawing connections, proposing hypotheses, uh, making inferences, 
and validating evidence. They learn by collecting feedback and improve over um, exposure to feedback and new data. And they converse by providing a more natural interface to engage human users. Cognitive systems are defined in terms of their capabilities. They can be implemented using technologies rooted in machine intelligence and data science, such as computer vision, uh, natural language processing, um, machine learning, data mining, predictive analytics, and information filtering. In the rest of the talk, I'm going to talk about how cognitive computing can enable smarter healthcare. It should not be surprising to anyone here that today's health system faces serious challenges. Let me give you some data points. A new drug, on the average, takes 2.6 billion US dollars to develop and 12 years to become available to patients. Every year, there are 2 million adverse drug reactions in the United States alone, contributing to 100,000 deaths. There are 40 million new cancer cases every year, uh, demanding a 40% increase on cancer care over the next 10 years. Clinical trials are an uh, important treatment option for cancer patients. Although there are more than 230,000 active <coughs> clin clinical trials around the world, 80% of them fail to recruit enough patients in time. A doctor may have to read 167 hours a week in order to keep their professional knowledge up to date. And nearly 8 trillion US dollars is spent every year on health and social programs around the world. Unfortunately, 30% of that is wasted. You got the idea. The challenges come in all directions, clinical, social, and economic. Watson Health is a young business unit at IBM. It represents IBM's endeavor to address challenges in healthcare by leveraging cognitive computing. The goal here is to help doctors expand their expertise and help people lead healthier and more productive lives. From a technical perspective, Watson Health builds upon three main elements, data, insights, and solutions. Watson Health maintains a large collection of, <coughs> of data, all dimensions of health data. It further overlays health data with advanced cognitive capabilities to uh, generate deep and actionable insights. It also hosts innovative health solutions empowered by the health data and insights. Those solutions are intended to help um, uh, to, to improve the overall experience and outcome for both healthcare uh, providers and consumers. Let's look at these three elements in more detail. Health big data is um, an essential asset for transforming global healthcare. Our individual health is heavily influenced by our behavior, lifestyle, nutrition, and environment, and access to care. Such behavioral, social, and other exogenous factors have a 60% impact on our health, while genomic factors have a 30% impact. In comparison, clinical factors have a mere 10% impact. So if healthcare professionals only have access to clinical data, they're not really getting the full picture. In our lifetime, we each generate more than 1 million gigabytes of health-related data, and that's equivalent to 300 million books in volume. 
that data could unlock insights to a healthier and longer life. Cognitive health insights can be <coughs> generated through advanced um, analytics. Analytics is driven by a combination of data sources and knowledge sources. Data here uh, refers to patient-level information, such as uh, medical records, uh, claims data, genomic data, as well as device and sensor data. And knowledge here refers to um, information captured in the medical literature, such as um, clinical guidelines, uh, scientific papers, books, and case studies. Information at scale is crucial to both prescriptive and preventive um, and healthcare. Um, IBM Watson Health today already has a large collection of data and knowledge that includes um, claims and payment data for 200 million individuals, um, 100 million in health records, um, 30 billion um, medical images, and 40 million uh, research papers. In fact, Watson Health has one of the largest collections of individual health data in the world. <coughs> this chart shows the typical data processing flow. One starting point is the transactional systems in hospitals, insurance companies, and pharmaceutical companies. Those systems maintain transactional data in an operational database, and an on-premise data gateway is responsible for extracting data from the operational database and transmitting it to the cloud. In addition, uh, mobile and medical devices also transmit uh, exogenous data to the cloud. All incoming data, whether from transactional systems or mobile systems, will land in a data lake on the cloud and is retained by the lake in its original form to meet compliance requirements. Data in the lake then goes through a curation process to be validated, cleansed, transformed, and standardized. Curated data is then stored in a data reservoir. For reasons of simplicity, scalability, and security, we actually maintain multiple pipelines of data lakes and reservoirs. Data across all reservoirs um, is then federated into a data ocean to provide a comprehensive view on patient data. Analytic systems retrieve the data needed and um, deposit them into an application-specific spe data mars. Analytics results are also stored in the data marts and are accessible to transactional and mobile systems. Those systems use the analytics results to optimize their processes and decisions. This chart shows um, the knowledge processing flow. All forms of documents, whether um, public or proprietary, are fed into the content service. The content service downloads those documents and converts them into a normalized form usable to downstream services. Given normalized medical text, the annotator service identifies and extracts key medical concepts, such as uh, symptoms, uh, diseases, medications, procedures, and living assistance levels. The annotator service further um, identifies the context associated with each use of concept, including uh, concept values, relationships, uh, co-references, negation, disambiguation, and hypotheses. The annotator service is driven by a rich collection of rules-based models, machine learning models, and deep learning models. Those models are domain-specific and are created by subject matter experts using the uh, domain expert tool. The medical insights service takes any combination of 
medical concepts as input, it then scans the annotated document corpora and returns the semantically relevant documents. The output of the uh, medical insights service is then used in health solutions to support and enhance human decisions. Western health solutions span all sectors of the health industry, um, including oncology and genomics, life sciences, government services, medical imaging, and value-based care. Among the existing solutions are clinical trial matching, um, drug discovery, care and social program management, um, and human population um, management, and um, provider and, uh, and payer uh, analytics. Let's look at some example solutions. The first solution we should look at is Watson Care Manager. In order to optimize uh, care outcomes, healthcare professionals need to have uh, real-time access to the full, full picture of an individual's health. In reality, much of patient reported data and exogenous data is not captured inside medical systems. And on the average, there is an eight-year lag before the medical evidence is put into practice. Also, a lot of clinical information is buried in unstructured text that's also preventing optimal care pathway. The Watson Care Manager solution um, integrates a wide variety of um, information, such as electronic medical records, uh, claims data, um, exo uh, exogenous data from uh, mobile and medical devices, and genomic data. As a result, it provides a 360-degree view on an individual's health. Um, it also incorporates clinical factors um, social factors and psychological factors to create a person-centric holistic care plan. Further, um, it identifies and analyzes um, clinical, clinical facts from unstructured content, such as uh, case notes in the patient record, and provides insights at the point of care. High-cost, high-need populations typically make up 20% uh, of the total populations, but they consume 80% of the costs. Uh, the Watson Care Manager solution has been leveraged to support such populations of special needs. Today, the solution is used to manage 147,000 individuals. Um, among its use cases are uh, opioid um, addi addiction treatment, care for um, senior citizens, and child welfare services, and specialty courts. The second solution we shall look at is Watson for Genomics. Genomic medicine treats cancer by targeting the specific genetic mutations that have caused the cancer. Genomic medicine involves analyzing um, a massive quantity of genetic data. As a reference point, one brain tumor requires the analysis of 800 billion pairs of DNA. In addition, identifying genetic mutations and matching them to drugs is extremely complex and time-consuming. It might take weeks or even months to, ma to manually perform uh, genomic analysis just for a single patient. Clearly, that's not efficient uh, or scalable. The Watson for Genomics solution automates evidence gathering and analysis. It looks for variations in the full human genome. It then uses cognitive capabilities to examine information sources such as uh, clinical guidelines, uh, scientific papers, uh, case studies, and um, patient information. Within a matter of minutes, it produces evidence-based insights on the potential drugs that may be relevant to a patient's unique DNA profile. The patient's doctor then reviews the information 
and determines whether um, a targeted therapy may be more appropriate than standard care. The solution is now used in more than 20 leading cancer institutes. In particular, um, IBM has formed a partnership with the United States government to bring this solution to the veterans' hospitals. Within a period of two years, 10,000 American veterans get to be treated uh, with targeted cancer therapy, which is a 30-fold increase from the number before. The last solution we want to talk about is Watson for Drug Discovery. Instead of me talking about it, I'm going to show you a short video clip. The video is taken from a documentary called This is AI that was initially aired on the Discovery Channel. In this video, researchers from the Ontario Brain Institute share their experience with the Watson for Drug Discovery solution. Can you help me play the video, please? Watson on Jeopardy! was a major breakthrough in helping computers begin to understand language. This underlying technology that won a game show was retooled into capabilities that can be used across industries, including healthcare. Watson for Drug Discovery processes massive amounts of medical literature, along with other data, to help researchers pursue breakthroughs, like finding new drugs to treat some of our most vexing diseases. Parkinson's disease is predominantly thought of as a movement disorder caused by the degeneration of a very specific set of cells within the brain that are involved in the sort of generation of smooth and controlled movement. Now with this hand, fast wide test. You start to get a tremor, often in the hands, slowness of movement, depression and anxiety. And then unfortunately there's no cure. We wanted to identify drugs which are already on the market for certain diseases that we might actually be able to use to treat Parkinson's disease. The tricky part of this drug repurposing, though, is it's not humanly possible to read all of the literature on all of these drugs, and that's where artificial intelligence can really help. Watson is able to see connections that we are missing. Medical journals publish over half a million papers each year, no doctor or researcher could ever read all the material generated. But Watson for Drug Discovery can help researchers quickly find new connections in massive volumes of medical and drug data to help them answer questions like, is there a drug that already exists that could be used in new ways to treat Parkinson's? After analyzing 28 million medical reports in less than 15 minutes, Watson made connections to 3,848 drugs that might be useful in treating Parkinson's. In this case, it generated a ranked list, but now we have to start deciding how are we going to prioritize the drugs on this list. Many of the high-ranking drugs came from certain classes of medication that were already of interest for Parkinson's disease, but there were also some other drugs in there that we would have never thought of, which is the exciting part, taking these new ideas that people haven't thought of before and testing those. One of the drugs we said, well, why haven't we ever thought that this may help Parkinson's disease? This part of the project gets really exciting because we're, we're doing something completely novel at this stage that we would never have been doing without Watson having pointed us in that direction. All right. So I should note that cognitive computing um, represents a very rudimentary form of artificial intelligence then how far away are we from true artificial intelligence? The answer is that we're not even close. The recent flurry of AI advances is uh, due to the rise of big data in combination with um, powerful computer chips and deep learning algorithms. Current AI is very good at classification and uh, perception problems, but it also has major limitations. Big data is not readily accessible in all domains, and is costly and time-consuming to train and test AI models. 
existing AI projects are confined to closed domains or constrained data types. That's why we have seen the most impressive progress in board games. Board games represent clean problems to work on. That is, a exact formal specification of the problem can be given to the computer in terms of game states, game rules, and how to determine the game outcome. Unfortunately, in reality, most problems don't fit that description. There are also an ample examples of AI making biased decisions, mostly due to skew in training data. Machine learning systems are also um, vulnerable to adversarial um, attacks, uh, which manipulate input data and trick the system to make mistakes, compromising the overall system security. The big box approach. I'm sorry, the black box approach used in uh, deep learning is the most problematic uh, because the system is unable to explain its behavior or decisions. Um, so um, that makes it hard to predict when failures might occur. And as a result, such systems cannot be fully trusted with uh, human critical tasks. In fact, no autonomous cars today are truly autonomous. They all require a safety driver or a remote operator monitoring the car, ready to take over as needed. Looking forward, there are several exciting new frontiers for AI. One important direction is uh, to replace big data with small data and figure out how to train AI models with much less data at much lower cost. Machine reasoning uh, is also receiving uh, renewed interest. In particular, knowledge-based causal reasoning will uh, make AI more explainable and more trustworthy. And deep reasoning with implicit knowledge and common sense uh, will be another key capability for demonstrating human-like intelligence. Further down the road, we expect to see AI systems that could uh, conduct conversations with humans in much broader contexts while being able to sense and respond to human emotions. We also like to see truly creative AI systems that can create beautiful things from scratch without mimicking training data. <coughs> Talking about limitations in AI, there are certainly things Watson does not do. In the 2016 US presidential election cycle, a grassroots organization called Watson 2016 Foundation organized a campaign for Watson to run for US president. A presidential candidate even challenged Watson to a debate. Watson's spokesperson at IBM responded, uh, Watson is not running for president, though we are humbled by the suggestion. Today, Watson is focused on other important work, such as helping doctors improve healthcare and teachers improve education, and therefore we have to decline your kind offer to debate. That's all I have. Thank you very much.